Hello, in this video, we will learn how to answer MCQ questions on arrays in Java. We have already covered basics of array in Java in another video. If you are not familiar with syntax and how to use arrays, I would recommend you watch this video first. Now the questions which are typically asked on arrays are on declaration, construction, initialization, finding size of array, using indexes, and output kind of questions. So the first basic question is, an array is reference or composite data type. It has elements of same data type. It is identified by a single name and stored in a contiguous memory location. Here all of the above are true. Now let's see some MCQs on array declaration. We know we can declare any variable as single dimensional array by putting a square bracket either before or after name. Both are valid. So in the first question, in this array declaration statement, what is the data type of array ARR? Here an array is an object even though it can hold primitive types or object references. So here object is the correct answer. In the next question, which one of them is an array declaration statement? The first one has array declaration plus array construction. The second one is array assignment statement. The third one is declaration, construction and initialization all in one. The last one is the one which has only array declaration, so that is the correct answer. In the next question, which of these are valid array declaration statement in Java? Here first thing to check is if all the keywords are correct and variables are as per naming convention. Like here one name is an incorrect variable name. String is incorrect as s is in small case. Next, you cannot include size during declaration, so ARR10 is invalid. Next, underscore Z is very much a valid variable name, so it is a correct declaration of the array. Next, float ARR has missing square brackets, so it is not a valid array declaration statement. In next question, which of the following is not an array? Here, if the square bracket is given along with data type, then it holds precedence and all variables declared after it with comma will be declared as array data type. If square bracket is given after the variable name, then only that variable is declared array and not after it. So here ARR4 is int variable and not an array. Next we will see some questions around array creation. Like which one of these is correct statement to construct an array. In the first statement, keyword new is missing. You need the keyword new to create an array. In the second one, the dimension is missing. At this stage, you need to declare what is the size of the array. Now in the third one, can we create an array of size 0? Yes, we can. So this is valid. In the next one, can we create a short array and assign it to int? No, we cannot do that. The next one has the new operator is of type int with dimension. So this one is correct. In the last one, we have given a negative value as dimension. Is that allowed? No, it will give negative array size exception. The next question is after construction of the array, what would be the value of each element? Now, since array is an object, it automatically initializes the value as per the data type defined. Since here the array is of type double, all the values will be initialized to 0.0, .0 and that is the correct answer. But what if it was an array of string or objects? In that case, all values are assigned to null. Same way a boolean array has all elements automatically initialized to false. Now we will see some questions around initialization. So which of the following is correct statement to initialize an array? Here the first one is incorrect as you do not give the size in declaration. Next one is char but quotes are missing around each character. Next one is a valid boolean array. Can char have numbers? Yes it can. 
Next one is a byte array with two values. Will it give any error? Yes, it will. As byte only allows numbers till 128 only, so it will give lossy conversion from int to byte. Last one is a long array. Will it give an error? Yes, this will also give error as numeric literals are by default int and here the size is beyond int. For long literals, you can specify L in front of it to work. Next question is which of the following is a valid array? Now in an array, all elements have to be of the same data type. So if you see the first one, even though it is short, it will not give an error as it is smaller than int and will be automatically typecasted to int. In the next one, even though C is char data type, it will be typecasted to double and this array will not give any error. Now what about the next one? Will here char variable C get automatically typecasted to string? No, it will not, as string is not a primitive type in Java. So this will give a compile error of incompatible type. What about the next one here? There is one short and two int values. Will they automatically get typecasted to integer class? Int yes, but short no. Integer will be able to automatically take in int values, but no other data type. Next set of questions are where you are asked to give total number of bytes which are occupied by the array. Here you need to remember the size of each of the primitive data types as shown in the table. Based upon that, you can quickly calculate the size. Like what are the total number of bytes occupied by this int array? You see it has dimension of 25 and each int takes 4 bytes. So the size required by it is 25 by 4 which is 100. Similarly, next one has 12 double values and each double requires 8 bytes. So this will require 12 into 8 which is 96 bytes of space. Next one is char. Char requires 2 bytes. So 4 into 2 means 8 bytes in total. Last one is float. Here if you see, there are 2 values allocated and each float takes 4 bytes. So this will also take 8 bytes of space. Next, we will see some questions around indexes. Index of an array is the location of a value in a particular array. Let's take this array as an example. In array, the index or subscript starts with 0. Here it is important to differentiate between position and index. Index runs from 0 and the position starts from 1. So if you are asked what is the element at index 2, then you see that the answer is 23. But if the question is element at position 2, then the answer is 26. Similarly, there could be reverse question, what is the index of last element? Here the index of last element is 4. Or what is the index of element 20? We know it is at index 0. The question could also be around right way to access an element like in these options, which is the correct method to access element 26. Here we always use array name followed by square brackets with the index of that element which is 1. Or the question could just be to give the range of the indices of the array. Like here the indices are from 0 to 4. Or the question could be on wrong index. Like what would happen if you give ARR 5? It will give array index out of bound exception. Now what are the data types that can be used as index? Int values, short, byte or char are all valid values. You cannot use long, float or double as index value. Can we use integer? Yes, we can use integer wrapper class as well. Another question that is asked is, which is the right command to find number of elements in the array? Since array is an object, you can use length member variable to get the length of the array. It is not a function. Another similar question is what is the index of the last element of the array? Since index starts from 0, the last element is at index arr.length-1. 
Now we will cover some output kind of questions, specifically along with looping statements such as for and while. Here in the options, you might see compilation or syntax error or runtime error too. I have already covered the kind of errors you can see during declaration, creation and indexing. Now we will learn how to do the dry run to solve such problems and find runtime errors. Here it is important you understand how for and while loop work. You can watch our videos on these to understand them better. Let's take a few printing questions to understand how indexes work with loops and how you will solve such questions. In the first question, we have an array ARR with four elements. We first look at the for loop and write the indexes it generates vertically. Like here it is 0, 1, 2, 3. Since we see inside the loop, ARR i is being used, you can note down the array values vertically as well. Then we execute the statements inside the loop. Here there is first printing of ARR 0. After printing it, i is getting incremented by 1. But when it returns to the for loop, i is incremented again, so i becomes 2. Now ARR2 is printed and then again i is incremented to 3. But when it goes back to for loop, i is incremented again to 4 when it exits the loop. So this for loop prints 10 space 30. In the next question, there is a char array. We know we can store int values in char array. Here too we first look at the for loop and write down the index value generated by for. It starts from 3 and goes till 1 as it is greater than 0, not equal to. Now for each of the index, we note down the value of array. Then we see how the for block is executed. Here there is a print statement. Since it is a char data type, will it print 68? No, it will print the char value of 68, which is capital D. Similarly, it will print capital C and then space and then capital B. At this point, we will exit, so D, C, B is the answer. In next question, we have an int array of 5 elements. Here to get index start value and end value, we get array 1 elements. The element at third index is 2 and element at 0 index is 1. So here the loop runs 2 times with index 2 and 1. We note down their array values as well. Inside the loop, it is printing AR1i multiplied by i. So first time it is printing 5 multiplied by 2 which is 10 and then space and then 3 multiplied by 1 which is 3. In next one, there is an array with 4 elements. We first see the for loop generating indexes from 0 to 4. This is actually 5 times and you might be tempted to think that it will cause runtime error. But if you look inside the loop, you will see for all values of i, it is printing AR20 only. So the loop will run without any errors 5 times and just print 1 every time. This will not give any runtime exception. In the next one, there is an array AR3 with 5 elements. In this, there is a while loop where i starts from 1. Since i is less than 5, it will print AR3 element. But first there is a prefix operator, so it will increment index to 2 and then print it which is 7. Then in the next pass, i is first incremented from 2 to 3 and then print element at index 3 which is 8. In the next pass, i is again incremented to 4 first and then the element at that index is printed. In the next pass, i is first incremented to 5. Now it will try to print arr35. Since this does not exist, it will give index out of bound exception. In the next one, there is an array of size 5 created and sum is initialized to 0 outside the loop. Then here the index takes on values from 10 to 14, which again might give a perception that it will lead to exception. 
but we need to see what array elements are accessed. So first when j is 10, array element at 0 index is accessed as j minus 10 is 0 and it is assigned the value of 10. This is then added to sum. Next when j is 11, element at first index is accessed and it is assigned 11. This is added to sum which becomes 10 plus 11 is equal to 21. Then similarly in next cycle, element at index 2 is accessed and is assigned 12. This is added to sum which is 21 now to give 33. Then in next cycle, ARR 3 is set to 13 which is again added to sum and then it goes on. When index is 15, it exits the loop. It then prints sum which is 60. From here you would have got the steps that need to be followed to do a dry run. Now sometimes you could be given an array combined with if and as a function parameter as well. Like what would be the output if the array passed to this function is this. Here too the steps are the same for the dry run. We know arr.length is 5 so we will first note down the values of i vertically on paper. Since you see inside arr i is used, you can note down the values of arr i as well. Then for each of the values of i, we will execute the loop. First c is initialized to 0. Then for each of the values of i, we will execute the loop. When i is 0, it will check first element which is 6 whether it is divisible by 2. It is true, so it will print 6. Then it will go execute the loop again and this time check if 9 is divisible by 2. Since it is false, it will go to next else if and see if it is divisible by 3. It is true, so it will add it to C which will now become 3. Then the loop will execute again and check 5 first whether it is divisible by 2 and then 3. Since both are false, it will do nothing and move to next element which is 2. Since it is divisible by 2, it will print it. Then it will pick up 3 and check if it is first divisible by 2. Since it is false, it will check if it is divisible by 3. Since that is true, it will add it to C. Now when it comes out of the loop, it will print C. So the output of this is 6, 2 and 12. With this we come to the end of this video. You can practice more questions like this using our MCQ question bank. If you have any doubts, you can also join us at simplycoding.in. Thank you and all the best. Thank you.